thank you, Marco, for the, uh, for the honors. Uh, uh, very quickly, my name is uh, uh, Robert. I was lucky enough to be the first non-family investors in a business called Oscar. Um, and I'm glad that you all guys are here. Some of you will even listen. Most of you do uh, emails anyway. Um, uh, quick question. Who has ever rented a car, a truck, a moving vehicle, whatever? So I just see who's listening. Okay, oh, well, quite a few. Yeah, it is a big market. So uh, across the world, it's about 100 billion uh, in a car rental market. Europe has about half of that. And uh, uh, I think the Oscar model has even a potential to uh, expand the addressable TAM. So now imagine you want to take a bite out of that. Um, you take a look at the existing competitors, what they are doing, right? And uh, you can see all of these measures that the existing competitors are doing, they're very capital intensive, so they require a lot of money. So that's exactly what we didn't want to do. So we set out to reconstruct uh, the world of car rental the way it should be. So we've been able to build a $50 million business. So those figures are historic, 24 is pretty much baked in. Uh, by leveraging existing supply, namely uh, car dealers all have a small fleet of rental cars uh, when they start off. With existing demand, uh, we typically start in rural areas where none of the big brands operate because it's just too small and not cost effective for them. And then we turn the car dealers into car rental companies. Let's quickly take a look at the dealers. Um, uh, we help them to turn something which costs them money, namely giving you a rental car when your car is broken. And most of the time, we know it, like 85% of the time, these cars are idle. They're not being used, right? And then we uh, put them on the platform, and then you or everybody else uh, uh, can rent them. So they typically start off with a handful of existing vehicles. We can predict the demand uh, from all the requests we're getting, and then we can tell precisely if you had a car of following categories, that would give you then that much revenue. So after a year, uh, uh, the average dealer has 15 cars uh, on the platform and make 130,000 euros of revenue uh, with, that, with, that, uh, with these 15 cars, which is very dearly appreciated by them because car dealers get under a lot of pressure from you know, the OEMs turning them into agents, uh, car subscription models, and all these uh, competitive uh, um, um, tendencies that make their life a little bit more difficult. Also, they have a complementary service offering. They have additional users, 85% of the users. They come completely ready, sold by us to the car dealer, and then they're happy to say, hey, look, you know, Marco, you just drove this beautiful car. You know, do you maybe want to buy it? As we all know, uh, uh, the test drive is one of the most effective ways of selling cars, so that's one opportunity. And uh, the amazing part is we have zero, voluntary, uh, zero unvoluntary churn. The only car dealers that ever churned were car dealers where we asked them to you know, please progress and do something else because um, they haven't been able to provide the right service, et cetera. And all these people are business people, so they know how to deal with customers. And even if they cannot upsell you, they say, hey, look, where do you have your tires done or your roadworthiness test, et cetera. Uh, let's let, take a look at the other side. The customers, they love Oscar because number one, most of the car rental companies have sort of average to poor customer satisfaction ratings. And here you meet a local business guy who actually treats you like a good customer. Um, also, the rentals are typically cheaper because the fleet is not new cars that are bought in bulk by the car rental companies to then sell them off for a profit after six months, but it's uh, vehicles that are three to four years old. Um, uh, also, you receive exactly the car that you selected, not just the category, which is important if you want to, let's say, move or uh, you need a certain number of persons that you want to transport in the car. Also, it's nearby. It's typically in Denmark, for example, it's less than 20 kilometers drive to the next location. Uh, and, and, and typically you have a very fast reply time and we have our own customer service team that gives you a good customer. So 40% of the customers already return and uh, we're very happy that the ever satisfaction is not so great uh, with, uh, with, the, with the customers because uh, that allows you to get in. What does that mark? <clears throat> It, it is a mix of all. Here is the reason, and it's a really bad slide. That's when you try to cram a lot of information into a small slide. The reason why we always put out Denmark, because this is the country where we're most advanced. It also does half of our business still. Right? Here's the profitability line. So all the countries above are profitable already. Um, we have, yeah, and I'm sorry, that's 10% market share. Um, so I should have adjusted for that. We have grabbed 10% of the whole uh, uh, Danish rental market. And we, we use the country to see if we want to launch new services or how things could turn out. So we have over 120 locations in Denmark, which is more than all the other competitors combined. 
Uh, and we also launch new services. We try, for example, TV advertising and stuff. That's what we all, always can try in Denmark. So we don't need a crystal ball to predict how the future is going to be. We can simply test it out on how things should be going forward. Uh, and again, it's profitable Denmark. It's profitable in the Netherlands, which is three times the size of Denmark. Uh, it grows sort of at a black zero in, 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 in Belgium. And then we're tackling Germany and uh, Spain as bigger markets, where obviously the entry ticket is a little bit uh, more dearly, and, um, uh, and it takes a little bit more time. Uh, so there is lots of KPIs. So, so, so initially, when I was confronted with the idea of Oscar, I thought that car rental was like a terrible idea, I have no interest whatsoever to deal with it. And I told the founder, look, like, don't, don't, don't bother. I'm not the right person. But this is one of the stories where you start looking at it, and each time you unpeel uh, uh, one, one uh, piece of the onion, it gets more and more attractive and more and more interesting. And again, we have the KPIs. We can project the KPIs in, in, in the future. The, road book, uh, the, 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 the international markets all follow the same trend of you know, decreasing CAC and so forth. But in a built-out market like Denmark or the Netherlands in this case, you have a 3.8 return on the first booking that you do. Right? Um, going to the future, um, the company is doing well. Uh, we invest something about $2 million a year. We have seed and angel money in the company. Um, and that's also the reason why I'm here today. The guys are build, busy building the company, but if somebody had appetite uh, to give us additional funding, we did a, uh, a scenario, which you see in the next slide. What happened if we gave the same model with the same playbook that seems to work according to the same rules in every single market we, uh, we attack? Then we could drive a, a faster acceleration. And what does it mean? So number one, we're going to Wisconsin in the summer, right? So uh, it's going to, that's the state of Wisconsin. We chose it as a landing point in the US. Uh, also, we're launching car subscription services like you've heard Finn Auto this morning. Uh, we're going to enable every single car dealer to offer car subscription, not only short-term rental, uh, which is sort of the toughest, economically the toughest market, so, so subscription should be easier. And we're also you know, helping the dealers to go after the B2B uh, services, which is, uh, requires a little bit of enterprise selling and a slightly different way of doing it. And then we have other EU countries uh, on the roadmap. And this is, uh, this is the amount of effect, impact, uh, we, could, we think we could do with a, let's say, 20-ish million dollar check, um, going to roughly 300 million in GMV and a break even uh, within uh, five years, no, sorry, four years. Um, again, company is doing well. We could do that a lot slower, but we think it's a unique opportunity. We're learning, we're improving the playbook day by day, and each uh, country that we enter is a little bit uh, faster. However, the countries are getting bigger, the tickets are getting bigger. So in order to de-risk and give us a bit more strength and also you know, uh, strengthen the platform across the board, make it more technically, uh, that's what we use the money for. Anyone in the audience who wants to join the Oscar journey, you guys are kindly invited. I'm super happy to follow up. Uh, and again, big checks, uh, very happy to to collect them and make this, make this thing go faster. And I have 39 seconds left. That gives us time for one question. Anybody there? Marco, your question? No, no, he just left. Anybody has a question? If not, that was my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention, and hope to see you soon.